Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to record this and then I'm going to check to make sure that the volume, because I'm on the headset, and I'm going to check to make sure that the volume is correct, because it says, see now the system just connected to the headset, which makes no sense, because I just checked it, but because I'm using a software known as Parallel Desktop. Parallel Windows 10 Parallel Desktop. It allows me to have Windows on a Mac computer. And because I'm using Parallel Desktop to have access to Windows programs on the Mac computer because the other computer, computers have a shelf life of five years. My computer is more than five years old. It was originally manufactured in 2017. That means that the wonderful memory board that it is made out of only has a five-year shelf life that's when it starts to decay and because it starts to decay after five years I don't want to overtax it because as you see I do a whole lot on my computers and with that being the case I'm reverting to using the Mac the Mac is only a year old and thus this month I got it a year ago this month well, you weren't even around a year ago this month. That's right. I had it ordered so that when I got out, I could start with my feet running. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 31st of December. So I figured I would do one last video this year. And then we'll go off into next year with a bang. There's only one problem. There is some information that I just discovered that explains everything that helps with everything and I do mean everything the credits everything the companies that I help organize and run everything that explains everything that lets me do all the things that I need to do that lets me assign the tax credits and it has been a full day for me a lot of people have been going around and planning for tonight because they want to ring in the new year and not realizing that it's already been the new year in every other country that's on the east to the east of America they've already had the new year some of them for over 17 hours it's not a new year ladies and gentlemen it's the same old year nothing has changed today is just the same as yesterday go back take a look Go back and look at yesterday, and you have the same problems, okay? You're worried about the same things. You're stressing about the same things. It's just another day. And for me, it has always been that way. It has nothing to do with my being one of Jehovah's Witnesses that it's just another day, and that I don't celebrate. This is a holiday for most people. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody, quote unquote, get together and they ring in the new year. Why? what makes it any different and that's what people are not understanding you see I don't have a misunderstanding I have an understanding of what's going on I know that it is a marketing tool it is a psychological thing to make people think that they could turn back the hands of time make last year appear that it didn't exist when it did sorry I'm making one of my Tarazi burgers I'm not really hungry, but I haven't eaten today. I literally was telling someone earlier today, I haven't eaten today, I didn't eat yesterday. Now, I, I had granola. I've been eating granola, and that junk has been filling me up. But I know <laughs> that I can't just eat granola every day and think that, oh, that's healthy. No, that ain't it. Okay, that ain't the point. You can't just sit up and eat granola. Okay, you're gonna have to eat more than granola. I don't care how healthy granola is okay so that's my situation I am making myself um, technically this would be called a Hawaiian burger you ain't Hawaiian that's right I, it's not Hawaiian but I'm making myself a Hawaiian burger with an egg oh that's nasty I've never had it before never tried it before but you know what I said if I'm going to sit up here and eat, and I's going to eat, then I's going to do it my way. 
because Frank Sinatra, uh, before I start talking about, I can't tell you everything about what I have discovered over the last 12 hours, <laughs> okay? But what I can't, because I can't, just it's just that simple. You just gonna have to know that it's genius and it's all legal and it was already there. Stuff I talked about in 2012, but because I had so much vacation time since 2012, I stepped away. And I went back and I took a look at something. Ladies and gentlemen, the thing that I took a look at told me everything you're doing, homie, you have the right to do. But before I talk about some of that, I'm not going to talk about all of it. I'm only going to talk about some of it. Ladies and gentlemen, um, Betty White, she passed today. And the first thing I told the person who told me that she passed, I, I, I'm a, I, I, I was right there with Betty White. The whole time I seen her from the very beginning, that woman was funny. And I like Betty. And the thing about Betty is that she died at 100 years of age, ladies and gentlemen. And she died before the new year. Betty White, that's the only way that woman could have gone out. Is exactly that way. Before the year began, it would have been foolish if she had died in the middle of the year. No, and I, I give that woman a lot of credit. I didn't know her personally. I don't know who she liked and disliked. I don't know who uh, she offended and didn't offend. You know, I don't know. And I know she offended some people because she's a comedian. But you know what I do know? That I appreciated her comedy. That's what I can say. I can say that with appreciation and a certainty that that woman and me, we got along. Okay? Just that, okay? Just that simple. Okay? So, Betty Wright. Uh, I, I keep saying right because the singer, but no, Betty White. Um, you know what? She was white, wasn't she? Anyway, passed, and you know, I'm not sorry to see her go because when you start to get older, you start to deteriorate, and after a certain point, some people. Uh, of course, yeah, yeah, it's a milestone. I reached 108 years old today. No, I can barely move, but I reached 108. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not a life. I, I do like the God that I serve, that he promises people everlasting life. You see, you can't get better than everlasting life. People say, well, that's going to get boring after a while. He says that we will never, ever come to know everything about him throughout all eternity. My phone is ringing, and I... I'm not answering it. The gentleman, he called me earlier, and I called him back, and he didn't answer the phone. Now, I have one rule. Y'all call me, and I make an attempt to call you back, and you don't answer your phone? I don't care if you're busy. I ain't got time, because I'm not going to I'm not gonna operate that way. I'm not going to play phone tag. Now, mind you, if you one of my SACCOM members or one of the people that I talk to on a regular basis and we, 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 you know, we tight like that, I'll answer your call. I'll call you back. But for those of you who are, you know, you're not in that circle, you don't get that courtesy. You want my time, I'll give it to you. But you're going to respect my time. Okay? You're going, whether you want to's or not to's, you goals respect my time. Sorry, that's just, that's the only way it can be. I can't operate any other way. I try, and it doesn't work. You know, I tried to cater. You're catering now, ain't you? You're cooking food for somebody else, ain't you? Ladies and gentlemen, um, me and the doggies, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not fun having dogs on the inside. When they want to be on the outside they're like little kids you know how when you were a little kid you couldn't go out during the winter because it was raining and snowing and all that stuff and you basically were stuck in the house well that wasn't the same with me because i was stuck in the house every day my mother did not allow us to go out in the neighborhood that's why i was grateful for my father because although my father did not live with us my father made it a point to be a part of our life every single day 
my father took us places. Like I said in the other video, when I was between, I think I was about eight years old, nine or ten. It was during that period. That man took me and my brothers to 39 different states of the United States. We just drove, got in the truck. His truck had a camper shell on it. We got in the truck and we drove. It was a men's thing. You know how men get together and they had a little men thing? Well, we had our men thing. And we did that only once like that, but it wasn't the only time we took a trip. Other time it was as a family. Oftentimes we would go to, uh, what's that? Mexico, Texacali, Mexico. That's where we would go, Texacali, across the Mexican border. And we were often going across there and watching the individuals with all of their little uh, gifts that they were selling on the border and so forth, crossing the border, driving in the Tijuana. And back then, ladies and gentlemen, we weren't worried about nobody kidnapping nobody. Because don't nobody kidnap no black boys and no black men and all that stuff. Not during that time, they didn't. They're they trying to catch up now for all the lost time, but it didn't happen back then. And as I'm thinking about all of this, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you that I sat up here today, and it wasn't a holiday to me. It, it, it's not a holiday. It's never been a holiday to me. I've never celebrated. No, I've had people call me today saying, we wish you a merry Christmas. I mean, a, a happy you and you know, all that stuff. And I didn't take offense to it today. Normally I would because I don't celebrate. Sorry. I'm eating some of my food. It wasn't the, uh, best arrangement because I spilled some because I, I did the egg thing and it's a triple decker now I'm going to hurry up with y'all because I want to eat and this has got my mouth watering and I ain't joking and I taste it a little bit and let me tell you something I'm going to do this more often because normally the shrimp I would eat it uh after I boil them but today I fried them and let me tell you something, that junk tastes all right. So my mouth is watering. I ain't, I ain't laughing about it. I ain't joking about it. I'm telling y'all the truth. That's why I'm eating and talking. I'm eating crumbs, people. I'm not eating a meal, not yet. And the dogs are in their room. Ain't gonna bother me right now. Ladies and gentlemen, I was working on a SACOM program today. I called one of the new people because the new people were going to be focused on just the tax credits. Now SACOM is going to continue to focus on the things it's going to focus on. Assigning the bonds, assigning the credits, assigning the funds to people. SACOM is going to continue to work on that. So don't y'all fret. However, we're going to be working as an organization on the tax credits because that's going to be our focus. Why would we not focus on lawful money? Why would we not do that as an organization? And we're going to help people with their debt. Look, ladies and gentlemen, it works like this. I've tried to explain this on video to people and it doesn't always come across and sometimes I'll have a conversation and I'll explain it so well and I'll be like man I'm not even recording this so ladies and gentlemen let's talk about taxes for just a moment let's talk about the New Deal in 1933 the government said hey we're about to create a matrix this is gonna be the sixth time we've done this, starting a new government, we've done this six times. Now, if you go to scripture, you'll see that they talk about five world powers where they've tried to create these empires with these new forms of government, how they're going to rule over mankind. That's what they tried to do. 
and they tried so many times and it just kept failing the one that came the closest was the Roman Empire because it lasted for a thousand years now don't get me wrong all of the other empires prior to that and we're not talking about the Chinese empires and all that because they weren't empires when it came to controlling the majority of the world that's what we're talking about the majority of the world the majority of landmass China although it's a large landmass did not control more than Nebuchadnezzar did did not control more than Egypt did and even if you want to talk about Ethiopia Ethiopia did not control more landmass than the Grecians did or the Romans did or the Medo-Persian Empire did that's why they were called empires I know a lot of people like to give the African nations more credit than you know the other people give them but y'all really do need to understand we're talking about empires that controlled the largest landmass that's the issue I know I know you're gonna come up and say well this one did this and this one did that well, I'm, I don't care I don't care that's not what I'm talking about ladies and gentlemen the matrix is real the stuff that you hear in the matrix is real they have tried this matrix thing at least six times in the past the United States was the seventh so-called world power in Bible history if you don't believe it go back and look at the wild beasts it tells you in the book of Revelation the 17th chapter that the wild beasts the head stand for kings kingdoms ladies and gentlemen there are seven of them they tried it six times the seventh time is now 1933 ladies and gentlemen they tried this new system it wasn't really new but they called it new it was the commerce system where they were gonna play with monopoly money now we all know that monopoly was invented let's see if we can pull up monopoly being invented I gotta make sure that I don't show y'all something that I ain't supposed to be showing y'all because I have people's documents pulled up on some of these browsers so I gotta make sure okay M O N O P O L O N Y man that's a whole lot of O's I N V E N T E D you gotta take your all caps off so even though Monopoly was invented in the early uh, 1900s ladies and gentlemen it is exactly what they were preparing the people for remember government doesn't do anything 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 unless it lets you know about it because notice is everything in the 1930s the height of the Great Depression a down in his luck family man called Charles Dole invented a game to entertain his family ladies and gentlemen in the 1930s is when they created this new system of monopoly the government said hey 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 hold on people we know y'all depressed just like he was doing with his family they were depressed so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give y'all we're gonna hey, we need your money we need your values you're gonna give us your value that's okay we got you <laughs> we're gonna give you this this monopoly money to play with yeah it ain't gonna have no value no 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 it ain't gonna have no value but you're gonna be able to trade it with each other barter with each other and you're gonna make a game of it and we need you to participate okay it only the system only works with participation if you don't vote you don't have a say and as long as you participate and contribute we are going to make sure that we do our best by you so the people started participating in this game they gave them monopoly money but oh hold on now some of you we ain't gonna give a lot of money to we're only gonna give it to a few of you we're gonna give you guys are gonna work with the bankers and we're gonna give a few of you a lot of money the others of you are gonna have to work hard but you're gonna be able to get a lot of money too we're not gonna stop you but we're gonna keep a lot of you po we're gonna put a lot of you in jail and you got to pay to get out okay and you ain't gonna be able to get out of jail unless you pay so that's what we're gonna do to a lot of you 
we're going to play Monopoly. We're going to do it on a national level, and we're going to call it, hey, the New Deal. It's a new games in town. And that's what they did. So while everybody's playing Monopoly, the government said, hey, if you play right, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to be tax exempt. All you got to do is play the game by the rules, and you'll be tax exempt. So some of you are going to be smarter than the others. You're going to operate yourselves as corporations. Now, we're going to set up these corporations for you, and we're, we're going to make you corporations in a sense. And you should be following your taxes as corporations, but you're not going to do it because you're going to be told that you're an individual and that you're not a corporation. And you're going to be yelling and screaming and shouting, but you don't understand. We are going to let you operate as a corporation. A corporation called a sole proprietorship. Yeah, we're going to make that famous. And we're going to take the sole proprietorship and we're going to put it on the same tax form as the individual so that we can confuse you. Yeah, so when you go to work for an employer, if you're not being paid a salary, but you're being paid an hourly wage, then you're an hourly laborer. You're being paid by the hour. You are a laborer. You are a subcontractor. So you should be filing as a sole proprietor. But that's okay. We're not even going to teach you how to do that. We're just going to tell you that some of you are going to be smarter and you're going to do that. And you're going to write off your lunches and you're going to write off your fuel and you're going to write off your expenses. And you're going to get that money back in taxes. See, that's the smart people who are going to do that. But the rest of you are going to be filing as taxpayers and you're going to have to seek and get a tax refund. But don't worry about it. We got your back too. See, when you file for a tax refund... What you don't realize is that you've overpaid. And we're going to give you some of that money back, but we ain't going to give you all of it what you overpaid. No, because you, you're going to be paying us too much. But we're going to need that overpayment because that overpayment is going to help us to pad our pockets and, you know, do our pork belly, belly, uh, you know, th don't worry about it. We got you. The people who are sole proprietors, they're going to get to write off a lot of their debt and we're going to give them a tax credit. But the rest of you who overpay because you're following the wrong way, that's why it's a voluntary program, ladies and gentlemen. It's a voluntary program. Taxes is a voluntary program. So because it's a voluntary program, we want you to understand something. Oh, by the way, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, you see this one says in the 1930s. Well, we have this one that says in the 1930s, but you notice it says the history of Monopoly can be traced back to 1903. Yes, you can give this gentleman the credit in the 1930s, but it was 1903 that it was actually invented. Why? Because this individual may have come up with the idea, but somebody had it before him. It doesn't even matter whether or not they knew each other. Okay, just like the yellow brick road being a road of gold, the Wizard of Oz. So please understand, two people can have the same idea. Because I've come up with things and find out that somebody else came up with the same thing. Like minds think alike. But also, there's nothing new under the sun. Sorry. Well, anyway, let's get back to this scenario. So when a guy who files as a sole proprietor files his taxes, ladies and gentlemen, he gets a tax return. But he gets a larger return than you do because he gets to write off a lot of things. And so the government gives him a tax credit. He gets a tax break, as they say. Yes, because he played the game. Now, the other people who work for an hourly wage and they took out this amount and took out that amount, why do they need to take something out of their check? Why can't the person who owes the money just pay at the end of the year? Because they want to take it out during the year because the government wants that overpayment. That's why they don't tell you how many deductibles you get. But you still get a refund. A refund is nothing but a tax credit. Most people don't look at it that way. But what they're doing is you overpaid in taxes. So what the government does is you file a piece of paper asking for your money back and the government credits your account and issues you a refund, which is a tax credit. People think it's just a simple return. No, it's a credit. The government operates off of a credit system. 
they don't operate off of money there is no money in the United States they took money out of the system did not the Constitutional Congress who put together that clause says that there shall be coined in the United States as money nothing but gold and silver so gold and silver were classified as money dollar bills never were they are not to this day legal tender is considered those coupons why the reason why they are legal tender because you can tender them for lawful money credit when you go to the bank you deposit the funds in the bank you receive a credit well ladies and gentlemen I just found something today that I knew about but when I typed it in my computer it took me directly you don't understand to the point of here is what you've been looking for you had it back in 2011 but you realized it again and here is it point for point exactly what you need to do and the first thing I did was I called up one of the new people whom used to be with us stepped away but is back with us again and I said this is what I want you to focus on I can't tell it to all of you ladies and gentlemen because it's a SATCOM thing I would love to give all of you this information, but I can't because I told all of you that we were starting a new organization within the organization. We have 15 different corporations and we're going to be operating under that corporation. We have just set and divided up the tax credits amongst the organizations and now the organizations are, by the end of tonight, dealing with the tax credits amongst each other so that they can file their taxes so they receive the tax credits this year that's what we needed you all to understand and the tax credits are this year you all received your tax credits this year why how did you receive your tax credits because all of you are part of a program a sat pack program you're either original sat packers sat pack one or sat pack tours or your sat pack primer sat pack plus or sat pack omegas or your q packers but each one of those groups receive their own credits and we're just completing the paperwork so we just ask for you to bear with us a little longer because this is not a simple process this is so many different forms that go together and after we do it, you'll understand that these are common forms that corporations do all the time. But all of you are investors and members in the corporation. So you're going to receive your investment stock. Remember, you did it before the end of the year, so you're going to receive your investment stock, and we're going to try to get it to you well before March so that you'll be able to file by April 15th. Okay, and even if we don't get it to you by April 15th, you will get it! Okay that's the first thing ladies and gentlemen SAA will be looking for arbitrators because quite a few people are going to realize that if Tommy had a debt with them and Tommy owes them money let's say Tommy is the manager of a bank and that bank foreclosed on Tommy and that bank literally got paid well you don't have to prove they got paid all you got to do is the contract and allege that they've already gotten paid that's what the QWR contracts are for but once you do the contract ladies and gentlemen all you have to do is do the arbitration award why because an arbitrator is a judicial officer the arbitrator is only there to see if there's a default that's the only thing the arbitrator is there to do interesting ain't it well because the arbitrator is only there to see if there's a default ladies and gentlemen if the other party isn't in default then the arbitrator won't issue an uh, disposition award but if the person is in default then you will get your disposition award you will get your summary disposition because it's a summary judgment that SAA has been issuing all this time every award that SAA has ever issued have been summary judgment there have been de novo hearings based on default at this point you don't have to go to court to get it confirmed you just have to wait three months pay attention same thing the banks do just have to wait three months if they don't contest the award in court and they can't because it's a summary disposition award it's a default are they in default yes or no has nothing to do whether or not there is a contract 
because the arbitrator already determines if there's a contract, if there's an agreement between the parties and all other eight points match up because it deals with arbitration. There are eight points to a contract with arbitration. Prior agreement, if it's a unilateral contract, arbitration clause and commerce clause. Those are the three points added to the six points of a contract. Technically, there are five points, but we're going to give it six points because expiration date is another point. Okay? So, with that being the case, even if the courts were to try to make some sort of determination, they can't. Because the issue is not whether or not the contract is valid. The issue is whether or not there was a prior agreement and whether or not you did a conditional acceptance. Notice that each one of the contract templates that are put up online are conditional acceptance. Basically, they're a notice of change in terms of agreement, which is 100% legal, which is what makes the contracts valid because you're notifying them that you're changing the terms and conditions the same as Google is sending a notice of change in terms and conditions to everybody's email. Millions of people's emails let them know that by January 5th, Google is going to change its terms and conditions. Go ahead. Tell me you haven't seen, received a notice of change in terms and conditions. We're updating our policy. Well, the contracts do the exact same thing. That's why they're legal. That's why they're binding. So, SA is going to be looking for individuals to help with the arbitration. And again, right now, SAA sorry we didn't get the documents out didn't it's been a lot of stuff going on so i apologize but saa is going to be rehearing some of the arbitration awards because the other party has either retaliated or remained in violation of the arbitration's order the arbitrator because the contracts allow the arbitrator to rehear and the arbitration award allows the arbitrator to rehear they're going to be rehearing those it is going to be 100 dollars plus ten dollars for the notary that's right your awards will have a notary on it this time so the total will be hundred and ten dollars but we're working everything out to get the notaries and the notaries are electronic okay can I get my own well where are you gonna find a notary that's gonna do it for ten dollars I can get my notary done for free well ladies and gentlemen knock yourself out but however SA will be doing it for hundred and ten dollars because it comes with a notary that's the new program so if you don't want it that way knock yourself out the reason why it's $110 is because the arbitrator has to get paid for revisiting. And if that arbitrator isn't available, another arbitrator, we will be bringing on arbitrators. They will get $50 per arbitration. There's another set of $50 going to go towards notifying all the parties and doing the proof of service and all the other administrative things that go with it. It is the cheapest we can do it to take care of the things the way it's supposed to be done, to do the notary. And there is a possibility that we might even do, we might even add the notary presentment with the proof of service now that I'm thinking about it. The reason why the notary presentment works, because the notary is also on the same level as a magistrate judge, because it's an administrative process, and that's all we're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who've listened to this video, I am glad you waited around to this time because this is what I wanted to talk about. My sandwich is still sitting up here getting cold, but we need to talk. Ladies and gentlemen, the people with the administrative process, you keep hearing people talk about the administrative process. If you go back and you look at the commercial lien process, which is an administrative process, all it took was you notifying the party, hey, we got a problem. You owe me some money. And that party would not respond. In most cases they don't respond so what you do is you basically tell that party look here homie uh, you owe me some money and I want my money back oh you don't want to respond to me okay I got you um, ladies and gentlemen right now I gotta go turn on my uh... give me a second I'll be right back to talk okay Ladies and gentlemen, I just had my Hawaiian burger with an egg. Well, two scrambled eggs. Uh, not scrambled. Uh, two hard-boiled. Not hard-boiled. Uh, what do you call those things? Not over easy. Well, it was over easy. So, yeah, we can do over easy because that's what it was. Easy. Peasy. Anyway. Um, and it was delicious. And I didn't want it to get cold because I don't have the heater on because 
it's about 50 degrees in here right now, but the hamburger ain't supposed to be 50 degrees. I think it's supposed to be like 95 degrees. You know what I mean? Oh, 120? Then you better believe it. So that's why I couldn't let it get to 50 degrees. You know what I mean? So I had to eat my hamburger. Ladies and gentlemen, 35 minutes. We're going to... 35 minutes and 20 seconds. We're going to start talking about the administrative process. Many of you guys have heard about the administrative process. Many of you, for the most part, didn't understand the administrative process. So we're going to take the time to explain the administrative process because I've been doing the administrative process since I learned about it in 1997. I I had heard about it before, but I didn't know about it. You know what I mean? Until Mr. Richard Fuller, literally a rocket scientist. He was in jail. I don't know what Richard was in jail for, but he was in jail. And Richard would have been one of those gurus. Richard would have been a guru. If he had done YouTube videos, you would have learned a terrible lot from him. This young man also was very good with legal work. And so he's the one who helped me. He's the one I told you about helped me with understanding redress and what redress was. And he told me, he says, I got something I'm going to show you. And he says, I know out of all the people here, you will do something with this. I don't know how he pegged me. But he pegged me. The man didn't even know me. He had only been listening to me talk. And from a distance, he knew that, yeah, this man will grab a hold of this bone and there'll be no stopping him. Little did he know. Okay. Well, Mr. Fuller introduced me to the administrative process. And from there, I ended up finding the Moonshine Steel's website with the commercial lien process. Once I learned about the commercial lien process and downloaded the document and went through the whole process, that took some time because back then it wasn't easy to get things from the Internet. But I was able to find it, download it and do all the documents. And I sent it out to everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, I still didn't understand the administrative process, even though those guys were explaining the administrative process. And they did a very good job. The only problem is they didn't explain everything. So let me explain to you the process, the administrative process. I have a problem with the IRS. Let's say the IRS has not paid me all the money they owed me. So I write them, hey guys, you owe me money. And I've done this and I, did, and I send them my proof. And I said, so I need you to pay me my money because you're going to pay what you owe. Riley! From the boondocks. You're going to pay what you owe. Um, ladies and gentlemen, they ignore me. They don't say we ain't paying you nothing. They don't say we don't owe you nothing. They simply just ignore me. So I sent them another letter. Hey, IRS, um, you are required to respond to me. You don't have a choice. And because you chose not to respond to me, you are now in default. Here's an opportunity to cure they don't respond to that. I give them a timeline. Back then, we were giving them 30 days. They ignored it. So we send them the last letter. Notice of intent, because they're already in default. The letter notified them they were in default. Why? Because they had to respond by a certain time. They didn't. They're in default. The courts don't give you notice of fault, opportunity to cure. They let you know you're in default. And you have to come in there and plead your case and explain why they should remove the default. And if you don't plead it good enough, the default don't go nowhere. Well, you send them a notice of intent. This is what I'm getting ready to do to you, mother. Okay. Now, what do you do? Do you go to court? Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard the guys say from the very beginning, you should not be going to court. You should be staying out of their court. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a problem with anyone, including a governmental entity, you do not have to go to court to prove your case. Many of you want to file lawsuits to get people's attention. Stop doing that. You don't need to file no lawsuit. You just need to go through the administrative process. That's all you need to do. And you default them. If you want to know the administrative process, I wasn't going to do this. I even took off my glasses because it's nighttime and my eyes are really tired right now. And I'm getting ready to go lay down and watch a couple of movies and go to sleep. Yes, I'll be asleep before midnight because I don't care about no first of no stupid year. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I'm, I know it's probably going to be SEDM, the Sovereign Education Defense Ministry, uh, but we're going to do C O O L. I don't know why I do that. I should have put PDF. Oh, I oh I put lies. <laughs> Commercial lies process. <laughs> oh God. Uh yes, that that no, that is funny because commercialism is a lie. Come on now. Oh, come on. Lean procedure on private commercial projects. So they already knew. Commercial lean process template right here. Now, I don't know if they have the template there on PDF filler because I don't think they have the commercial lean process. Too many documents for them to be understanding the commercial lean process. See, they got the lies and all that, but we're going to do commercial liens process. <clears throat> Hold on now. Yeah, PDF filler, I doubt if they have the commercial lien process there, but I do know that it's uh, at several sites. So let's see. How to follow mechanics lien. I didn't ask for a mechanics lien. I said commercial liens law. Look at that. Commercial liens law. I, I'm really interested in that one right there. This process is the determinant of real estate brokerage and commissioners agents involved in the transaction. Ladies and gentlemen, I would look at that if I was you, especially if you have a mortgage. I've never seen it. Um, hey, 1215.org, commercial lien, most potent weapon. They have it on 1215.org. That's where you're going to go. Okay? Don't worry about it. Go there. Because this shows you the administrative procedure. They explain everything. It's commercial liens, a most potent weapon, is the actual title it's been that way since they started. Okay. Now, let's see. Affidavit of obligation, commercial lien. This is a verified. I don't know that one right there, but I definitely want to tell you that you need to go to the most potent weapon. Okay. What all of you need to know is all liens are mechanics liens. This is the education you will get. You see, I went over every single word of that document. It took me months. Why? Because the way the internet was back then wasn't like it is now. And I told you I hated reading. But I did go over every single nook and cranny and word and looked up stuff and the stuff that I already knew I was able to fortify it with the information in the commercial lien process. Ladies and gentlemen, you see how they talk about redemption and all that? That's uh, Bill Thornton. Billy Thornton. That's his website. I don't know what's going on with Billy Thornton. I haven't heard anything from him or of him in quite a while. But this is freedom, HTTP, colon, forward slash, forward slash, www.freedomdomain.com, forward slash, sovereignty, forward slash, C-O-M, liens, com, liens, or commercial liens, dot htm. Commercial lien process, ladies and gentlemen, want y'all to pay attention. They give you all the chapters. Chapter one, chapter two, but they do the whole document. They put the whole document up here online for you. You can either have your system read it to you or you can read it yourself. Okay, they put the case laws in there for you, letting you know what rights you got and what you can do and what you don't do and what you got to do. Okay, they even explain to you about the notary presentment. Where do you think people got the notary presentment stuff from? These were the people who first put it out there for all of y'all and your grandmamas to know. Okay? Oh, it even has a criminal complaint. Okay? And I do like their high crimes and misdemeanors. They tell you exactly how to write a complaint, ladies and gentlemen. If you've ever wanted to know how to write a complaint, they let you know how to write a complaint. This is... The complaint I filed against the judge. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. That, that joke was hilarious. Okay. But go over the document. 
This is why they want to call people sovereigns. This has nothing to do with sovereignty. This has everything to do with these individuals understanding something. So let me explain to you what these individuals understood because it's time that you get it. Ladies and gentlemen, what those gentlemen understood when they put that together is that the only thing you have to do is notify the other party. The Supreme Court says that before anybody can be deprived of any significant due process right, they must be given notice. All you need to do is give them notice. Hey, you know what I noticed? Anyway, after you give them notice, then you just have to let them know, hey, you were required to respond. I asked you questions and only you have the answers. So I need you to respond. But you didn't respond, so you're in default. Okay, you need to pay me. I want my money. And then they don't pay. Uh-uh, I ain't taking you to nobody's coat. Forget that. Here's my criminal complaint. And they file a criminal complaint against the person. Now, the Supreme Court has said that you as a regular citizen can't file a criminal complaint. Ladies and gentlemen, a criminal complaint cannot be filed unless it's a private citizen. A corporation cannot file a criminal complaint. The attorney general doesn't file criminal complaints. A person files a complaint. The attorney general only prosecutes the complaint. So when the courts say that you can't prosecute a complaint, you better believe I don't want to prosecute it. I want to file a criminal complaint. That's what we did the criminal complaint against judges. Ladies and gentlemen, trust me, the process works because you file a criminal complaint against a judge and let's say the attorney general doesn't take it, then eventually you let me know. You send me a copy of the complaint you filed against the judge, not all the paperwork that went with it. I don't need all the paperwork that went with it. I just need a copy of that first page, which lists all the names of the judges. Y'all know the criminal complaint document we got. Just give, send me that because we'll put a class action before the Supreme Court against these wayward judges because they are the judicial branch of government. And guess what? When we put our complaint with the Supreme Court, the attorney general will get a copy. They will have a certain period of time in which to pick up the case or step away. At that point, we get, y'all just don't know, grand jury impaneling powers. That's what the whole QTAM is all about. So trust me when I say it's not time to be playing with these idiots no more. Anyway, let's continue. Ladies and gentlemen, the administrative process, once you complete it, there is your documented debt, especially if you use a notary to go ahead and mail out the documents and send it and certify that they mailed it out. Once you use that notary to certify that they mailed it out, then that's all she wrote. Why? Because you have an administrative record. That administrative record, as long as it's documented, that becomes a court of record, a common law court of record. Now you can take that record and you can literally tell them you need to pay. And they don't pay. Ladies and gentlemen, you simply just wait six months. And you forgive them their debt. As you also want them to forgive you of your debts. And that way your heavenly government, <laughs> it ain't heavenly, will bless you. What a tax credit. The tax credit is automatic at six months. Ladies and gentlemen, if all of you followed the administrative process, none of you would be broke. None of you would owe any taxes because even if you owe child support, when you filed your taxes and you filed the tax credits, the child support will get paid through the tax credits. I just need you all to pay attention. The guys who were doing the administrative process were 100% correct. You don't have to go to court. They were telling you to stay out of the courts because you don't need to go out of the courts to sue someone. You can sue them administratively. You can sue them through the administrative process. Many of you need to put together organizations that do just that, that send the paperwork out on behalf of people. What do you think the SAT packs are, people? Go back and look at your SAT pack and see that's what we were doing. Now, the only thing we were doing, they didn't pay you. You can still do the tax credits because they're owed to you. But we're giving you tax credits. Go back and look at satcom911.com forward slash setup and look at what you're getting. Everybody keeps saying, well, I got the SAT pack and I got tickets and I can't get rid of my tickets. And our SAT pack was about to get. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't understand you all. 
we never promised any of you that if you got a sat pack, it was going to get rid of your tickets. I, I do find that, <laughs> God, hilarious. We never told you it was going to get you out of jail. We said that some people have utilized it and it has benefited them in court because you're going to get some judges who definitely don't want to go through this madness because those sat packs have a lot of power. But you have other judges who will pretend to ignore it because they know you don't know what you're doing. It's not SATCOM's job, nor is it my job, to tell you how to handle every single situation. Ladies and gentlemen, we didn't give you the SAT packs so that we could explain everything to you. We gave you the SAT packs and told you to do your own homework and research. You hear me say that all the time. I've been saying it since I started this whole process of talking to people on a wide basis back in 1997. That's when I was talking to groups of people. Prior to that, I only spoke to three or four people at a time. I've been doing this for a while. I'm not joking. I've been doing this for a while. Every time, like, let's say I told you guys about a police officer slamming me on the hood of the car and they took me to jail for a day. And I talked to people in there about the law. Whenever I'd had a traffic ticket, I talked to everybody there about what they should be saying. Or the time when, <laughs> sorry, we lost the championship game and I'm taking the guys home and I'm sweating and I just got finished playing and I hit a three-pointer from half court. We were already losing at that point, but I still hit that three-pointer. Figured I had nothing to lose and it went in. Only took one shot from half court and it went in. That's my accuracy. Anyway, I'm driving home and I'm kind of pissed off. And as we drive past an overpass in East LA, police officer pulls right behind us, turns on his lights, and I, mother, what the, and I slammed on my brakes in the middle of the freeway. I'm not joking with you. He was, if you could have seen the look on his face, because I'm looking in my mirror at him the whole time. He is swerving and grabbing the steering wheel and trying to keep from hitting me. And then he stops and he says, pull over to the side. And I look up in the mirror and I point to the right and I said, oh, shaking my head in agreement. And I pulled over to the right, right. ladies and gentlemen. He comes over. He is upset. Hey, how you doing today, officer? Driver's license and registration. Driver's license and registration? Sure thing. Could you give me my driver's license and registration out of the glove compartment? Officer, what, what, what's the problem? What's the speed? He pulled me out of the car. While the other two people are still in the car, he goes to the car and he claims he found a well, manila baggie full of something. Said he found it all over my seat. I said, you found it over my seat? I said, that's interesting because I just got finished playing basketball. And I'm still sweating. Wait, look at that. It ain't on my pants. It ain't on my legs. Hmm. I wonder how it could have been all over my seat and not be all over me. And he took me to jail for a day. And I had to get home from East L.A. There were... No buses going from East LA to my house from that direction. He let the two people who were in my car drive my car to my home. Ladies and gentlemen, neither one of them had a driver's license. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to explain to all of you is even in that situation, I'm talking to people in the jail about the law because I, I knew he couldn't do that. But the problem is, I didn't understand how to get back at him because that was my that was my that was my mentality getting back at him I had to get even well ladies and gentlemen you don't have to get even with anybody anymore do the administrative process with them write off the debt by forgiving the debt after six months and then file it on your taxes all you got to do is document it because that's all the administrative process is is you documenting the debt didn't the IRS tell you? Hold on. We're going to do this the last thing, and then we're going to end this video because some of you are going to appreciate this. Come on, come on, come on. I don't know why it's taking so long. All right. That's the potent weapon. Now we're going to do I-R-S-T-O-P-I-C. Where's 453? It ain't got it. 453. Ladies and gentlemen, you do, you do, you do need to go to IRS Topic 453. It is that important. 
So when you get a chance, it's going to be the first thing that comes up, IRS bad debt deductions, and that's where you want to go. We're not going to be over an hour in this video, but we are going to go here and point this out to you because this is the administrative process that the IRS is telling you about. This is the administrative process. If someone owes you money and you can't collect, you may have a bad debt. If you have a bad debt, come on now, we can go to the bottom because you got to get to the bottom before you can start from the top. Made it to the bottom now. I started from the top. <laughs> yeah, you say it backwards. Don't worry about what I say it. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you all to pay attention. The statement must contain, you must have a statement of bad debt, a description of the debt, including the amount and the date it became due and the name of the debtors and any business or family relationship you have between the debtors and the efforts you made to collect the debt, why you decided the debt was worthless. You just have to document the debt and answer those questions. That's all you have to do, people. They are telling you that's the administrative process. You know what they also say? Pay attention. It is not necessary to go to court. Do you people understand? They're telling you, follow the administrative process. You don't have to go to court to report a bad debt. Give your 1099-Cs, write it up, and send them their 1099-C and make them pay the taxes. That's the administrative process. The people have been telling you this for years. You don't have to go to court. It's right here in front of you. This is what I do. My job is to bring it to you so that you get it because nobody brought it to me this way. I had to figure this stuff out on my own. So do not talk to me about how difficult it is because I was there. I know how difficult it is. But you guys are getting all of this information through these videos. People, there are over a thousand videos by Eon. A thousand. Thousand by Eon. Several hundred just this year alone explaining this stuff. So do not say that you don't have access to the information or it's too difficult. It's too well, your videos are too long. The reason why my videos are so long is because I'm giving you all of the information, not part of it, not half of it. All you got to do is pay attention. So while you're on your way to work, Quit listening to that junk. Quit listening to that, that junk that they call news. Quit listening to all those other people talking about the COVID vaccine and COVID virus and all that. Stop listening to that stupidity. Learn what you can do to help you and your situation. Let everybody else, look, It's going everything else is going to take care of itself. But your lack of knowledge, which is called ignorance, your ignorance will not take care of itself. Because you can't gain knowledge unless you put forth the effort to understand knowledge knowledge peeps gain gain peeps knowledge pay attention because some of y'all ain't peeping nothing okay ladies and gentlemen follow what the irs says the debt becomes worthless when all the facts surrounding it say you ain't getting paid to show the debt was worthless you must establish that you've taken reasonable steps to collect the debt follow what they say the administrative process it is not necessary to go to court you don't need a judicial judgment. Even with arbitration, it is not necessary to go to court. Okay? You may take a deduction only in the year the debt becomes worthless. Oh, look at that. You don't have to wait until the debt becomes due to determine it is worthless. Oh, well, if the debt, if you don't take the deduction, what you get to do? Carry it forward. They don't tell you that part here, do they? But I tell it to you. I tell you what they're missing. A non-business bad debt deduction requires a separate detailed statement. So you've got to include a statement, ladies and gentlemen, even if it is a business debt. You still have to create a statement. 1099C, ladies and gentlemen, is your buddy. Make this the year that you write off your debts. Make this the year that you write off your debts. Make this the year that you write off your debts on your taxes. It is the Schedule C with the 1040. But I don't file taxes. You will this year, mother... I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got to go. I said less than one hour. Take care of yourselves. I hope this information benefits some of you because if it benefits one of you and you can do something with it, help your neighbor. Help your neighbor. Would you be? Could you be? My neighbor? Got to go. Yaddy, 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 ho!